This is As of Late Podcast. It's your boy Titus, and we got Simon something in the building. What's up, brother? What is good, sir? Good to see you, man. Good same, to see you. Same, same. It's we been made, a while. I know. We made it happen. Yeah. We made it happen, baby. <laughs> How you feeling, man? Good to good to uh, have you on the show. Yeah. I formally you. met you uh, last night at the uh, dope event that you guys did. You, Mercury Carter. Shout out to Mercury Carter. Who was the other dude that was on the stage with y'all? Uh, that's the homie uh, Ben. Uh, he used to go by uh, Lawn Lawn Rancher. Mm, okay. So now he's one of those I'm a... Uh, Use my real name type artist. Mm, so, okay, yeah. so Ben. Yeah, Benjamin uh, Sachko. Okay, shout out to Ben, man. He reminded me of how you guys were in a zone, like how he was contributing and everybody was doing their thing. I don't know why. It's probably it's probably racism me because of he, he's white. He gave me Mike Dean type of energy. Mm. Where it's like, I mean, you're, you're t- tell him to take that as a compliment. Yeah, though. you're just black. like you can't be racist. It's mm-hmm. okay. hey, be- because of really like um, just the con- what he was adding. Yeah. The um, you know the. Con- What's the word I'm looking for? The contribution that he was adding to it was right. dope as well. Yeah. Everybody played their part beautifully. I agree. Mm-hmm. Thank you for filming that one. Yeah, man, for yeah. sure. How did that even um, get into existence? Who reached out to who? Like, how did that come apart? Yeah, uh, so, like, I had known of Mercury, you know, of Kevin for years, but just never really actually met him before. Um, you know, like, I had been at some of his shows. I'm sure he been at mine. We just never, you know, talked mm. or whatever. Over last summer, some of the events I was doing, uh, you know, we, we started like you know kicking it more often, and um, he came to me with the idea as far as doing the uh, Bjork covers. Uh, you know, he essentially wanted me to kind of like DJ his sets for him, and uh, you know, I kind of came back to him with the idea of us just kind of creating you know somewhat of a band of sorts mm, okay. to actually play them live more than just you know being a jukebox, you know, for yeah, like yeah, term, and uh, yeah, you know, from there, like we got these uh, shows. Word, word. That's a dope um, mix with, I think it's refreshing because you have the history of um, you, which is pretty, I mean, we're going to get into that because it's, it's so many layers when it comes to just like your production credits and the avenues that you go into the world. It's kind of like you reminded me of um, myself when you talked about uh, you and Mercury because I ain't out here like being an artist um, <laughs> at this time yet, yeah. but um Seeing you, the history that I've seen, like even just looking on our um, Instagrams, we have a lot of the same mutual people. Yeah. And I remember back in the day, like I was telling, um, shout out to, um, what is her name? I think her name is uh, Mariah. Might be, might be Mariah, like uh, Peculiar, Hipp- yeah. Peculiar Hippie. Yeah. And I was telling her about even with her history of how the first time that I had seen you was actually back in the day at um, Tip Top. Okay. And you were doing an event out there with her hosting it, and you right. were doing, um, you were um, like DJing and like and playing and like doing like production, like pretty much showcasing your instrumentation of what you do, and uh, it was dope. I was like, man, this dude, like, what is this dude, man? And you kind of get just typical, like, I don't know, you just get lost in the sauce, and I, I felt like I um, would have said good set. But I don't know. Time goes on. It's just like I look at fast forward and now I was like, how did I go this long? Not talking to Simon something, bro. I mean, <laughs> with all the with all the people that, um, you know, we have in common. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I definitely um, with the exception of that one time, um, I really didn't know what you look like. All right. Yeah. And then on top of that, um, I, I took a break myself when it came to just being out yeah. like. Yeah. Before COVID, um, dealing with just, like, depression and getting over alcoholism and stuff like that, I kind of took a break from just going to shows and, and all of that magnitude. And so I really got back into it um, kind of 2021, the beginning, like, when people was like, all right, it's a vaccine. We can come back out now. Yeah. Um, around that time, I started to get back into it. But even with that, I put the face with a um, name actually during Clubhouse. Okay. And not the clubhouse that me and you talked on. It was a clubhouse. It was it was that room, yeah. but it wasn't that day that okay. me and you were. I was just like, you know, like, because sometimes everybody has anxieties and stuff like that. Be like, man, like, yeah. I want to get this dude's flowers. But, you know, some people be dicks. <laughs> <laughs> it was just Ooh, like, man, man. <laughs> I want to get this dude's flowers. And then, like, I, you know, you just got to get to the level because life is short. To just like express how you feel, man, and, and that day was like a beautiful moment where it was just like everybody in that room. It, it was it was only like it was probably like brief. It was probably like ten of us in that room at that time because we did it midday. Yeah. And I was like, man, like Simon, man, I just want to give you your flowers, bro, because like you've been doing 
what you do for the um, community for a dumb long time. Like, I've seen your footprint in a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't know if I'll have this opportunity again. So I was just like, bro, like, why, while I don't have you, like, doing a set or, like, you know, at – a uh, event where you're with your crew and people don't want to, you know, intrude. Right. Let me take this time to like give you your flowers there, and it was like it was dope. It was like feeling mutual because you actually been watching the podcast because yeah, no. I interviewed a lot of the homies, and so it's it's dope that we finally full circle moment. Yeah, got to the point where we have you on the show now. Yeah, no, it's cool. I mean, number one, for one, don't blame yourself at all. Um, I'll be under a rock, and um, that you know, boy even, be Patrick out here. Yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically. You know. <laughs> And, uh, you know, even with me, like, being, you know, like, born and raised in the city, um, I was, at, like, you know, here for a good little while, um, you know, like, college and just kind of traveling around. So I didn't move back here until, like, 2017, 2018. And, uh, you know, from there, there was, there was just a lot of people who I, like, you know, met through, like, you know, Twitter or whatever the case was that, you know, had never actually met me in person before, you know, who would just kind of bump into me. And, you know, like, there's just, like, numerous situations where I'd be in a room, be in a kickback, be in a show or something, you know, group discussions, homie saying it out, whatever. And, like, I'll be talking, and then, like, somebody will refer to me as Simon, and there'll be someone else in the room and be like, oh, Simon something, you know, uh-huh. like, put the two and two together. So, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm used to it, you know. Um, if, like, the cool thing about that uh, B show I used to throw, um, and just a lot of the events I've been involved in, it's, They've been really good at like bridging the gaps between people. Mm, you know? Yeah, um, I agree. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's all. I mean, appreciate you coming out. You know. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. How did you come up with the name um, Simon something? Is your name really Simon? Is it? <laughs> yeah, no, it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, so we got that marked up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've had like a few different names and aliases throughout the years. Some that I've you know been open about. The ones I never even told anyone. Mm. And. Um, like the name that I had before it, uh, which one? It was, uh, so my name was Anonymous, you know, mm. mysterious and all that good stuff. I um, feel you. But I saw it for the eye, you know, being different and smart, you know, search engine optimization. Mm. And I realized there was like somebody named Anonymous in like every state. Just, <laughs> you know, so like I shortened it to AIS and, uh, you know, rock with that name for a while. Mm hmm. Until I was, like, wondering why people couldn't, like, Google my name, and I realized there was an Australian Institute of Sports. Mm. You know? Um, and plus, like, when I was in college, I just had a homie. Um, he was just so comfortable, like, saying his full rap name. Mm. His full rap name was, like, Mighty Joe Young, the karate face Kush Crusher. <laughs> and, like, we'd be at parties and stuff. We'd just be, like, talking to women, just, like, you know, introducing himself that way. And, like, there was just something that just kind of clicked in my head. Like, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to, you know do that so yeah i just changed to simon something just so i can introduce myself as simon and i have to like worry about it mm, but like i yeah. didn't really want to just use my real name so simon something mm, or dope yeah. i always thought it was a, a, a playoff simon says uh, like, <laughs> I mean, like yep yeah, so like you know i'm 30 years old now it's like wild being like 30 and like being around other people like my age and they'll just like they, they'll just they'll assume that is like the first time i've ever heard it Mm. Like, hey, you ever heard of Simon Says Joe or Simon Says? So? And like, they'll look at me for like a reaction. I'll just gotta be staring. Like, that was big when we were kids. Yeah, you know? a little bit. Yeah. Simon Says. Oh, said, I know. Simon Says. <laughs> I, I know. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nah. Yeah, yeah. Just like a comfortable name for myself. Word, man. Word. Yeah. Well, it fits. It fits well. Yeah. Because yeah. you're always up to something. Yeah. <laughs> like when it comes to music and, uh, like I said, being a part of the community, yeah. your imprint is on a lot of stuff, man. Like and, and like I said, I wanted to definitely take the time to get to know you, know your background, and and in the meantime, um, in the meantime, in between time, really just give the homie his flowers, bro. Because this is really what this show is about. Is really just like I was telling my boy the other day. Um, I had went from the four on here, and he's a young dude, mm-hmm. and like he's he's he has a lot of potential. He's only twenty, okay. And I was like. The um, because he was like, man, like I really appreciate you, man, like having me on the show and stuff like that. And I was like, bro, like this show is um, I was like, I appreciate you taking the time to be on the show. I was like, this is nothing to me but a time capsule. Yeah. I was like, you know, this show is meant for the old, for the young, um, you know, entrepreneurs, musicians. Yeah. The goal is to just really check on people, 
um, mentally and give them their flowers and and give them give the audience their story. Because yeah. Charlotte, when I feel like when it comes to the culture in general, not not even just like the music scene, but the art scene as a whole, and just even when it comes to just like mom and pop shops, I feel like we're always like undergraded or under the radar. Yeah. And so I wanted to really me being someone who's born and raised here, take the time to really give the flowers to the people that I know have been working consistently for years. And you're one of those people, man. You're one of those people. So like I like I said, I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, where did it start for you though? Like what what were the early years like for Simon something? Yeah. Were you born here in Charlotte? Or are you North Carolina based? Yeah, yeah, born and raised in Charlotte. Um I like the West Side my whole life. Word. And, um, okay. That's what's up. Yeah, like me myself, I used to play like uh, quite a few different instruments, mainly violin. Ooh, the that's day. a tough instrument. I just, I mean, something, clicked, something. I, mean. Yeah, yeah, clicked, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like, I wanted to play drums, but only one kid could play the drums, so I played violin, got good at it. Um, I really good at it, but uh, ended up DJing, like started DJing when I was fifteen. Mm. Um, you know, I just got like homeschooled, um, like right before high school, needed something to do with my time, basically. Mm. And, um, yeah, just, like, really took off of DJing to the point where I just kind of dropped everything else I was doing. Soccer, do, you know, all my other interests at the time to focus on DJing. Mm -hmm. And um, from DJing, I got into producing. And from that, I got into engineering. Uh, rapped some when I was younger. And, uh, you know, really just started blossoming from there. Like, you know, honing all those different crafts. Um, ended up going to college. Went to Full Sail. I uh, got my degree there. What college did you go to? A uh, full sale. It's uh, it's in Orlando. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Corner school, artsy school, RC fartsy. You know, mm, okay. You know. That's what's up. Got my degree there, and you know, it was you know, like I kind of touched on when we were talking earlier. It was, it was just kind of bouncing around the country for a while, just living mm. in different places, getting experience in different things, and uh, you know, moved back here with all that knowledge. So, mm. yeah. That's what's up, man. So it sounds like you definitely um, got attracted to the art. At a very early age. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you still um, play the violin from time to time? I don't. And I've been wanting to, like, get the rust off. I'm thinking about just buying one soon and, mm. you know, just sitting down for a few months. Yeah, yeah. Back together. Uh, well, no, no, it's been years. Mm. You know? yeah. All right. Well, maybe it's time, like you said, maybe time to get the dust off, man. Yeah, yeah. I always admire people that can play that because, like, when it comes to the violin, I feel like if you can figure that out, um, cause that's considered like, even though like you went through that process and that's considered a tough instrument, bro. One yeah. of the tough instruments to learn. Yeah. If you can learn the violin, I feel like the other ones are a breeze. Like yeah. <laughs> when it comes to like, um, that and the keys, I okay. feel like, I feel like if you can learn a piano, if you can learn the violin, the other, um, instruments are more, a lot more smoother of a process for you to right. get through like the guitar and, um, like with the piano is like, I know a lot of guys that go into production and um, of course you got dudes that don't play the keys at all, yeah, yeah. but I tend to find the people that um, are it's a more easy of a transition with or people that have had a history with playing the keys. Yeah, no, there's like very interesting conversations about um, you know, there's producers who have music theory knowledge versus ones who don't, you know, mm -hmm. ones who play instruments versus ones who don't. And it's always, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting listening to like a producer's music and trying to guess, you know, what their knowledge or I guess experience comes from. Mm. And then like researching the producer a little bit more and saying, okay, well, this guy, you know, used to play in a band back in the day, or this guy doesn't know like what a quarter note is. He just mm. makes really great music, you know. Or yeah, yeah. What do you define as? Um, <clears throat> because that there's always that talk to where now. Um, especially with this new generation where everything is tagged. And, you know, I get it. You know, you tag everything. I grew up in an era where um, you knew off of the, the actual beat if it was a Timberland beat. Right. You know, right. Like, or you, like Pharrell didn't have to put a Pharrell tag on it. Right. Which I don't have a problem with at all. Like some of these guys, like 808, like I, I think he's phenomenal what he does and he tags his stuff. Metro's mm -hmm. phenomenal. And then he'll have certain songs where, like, he'll be producing for the weekend and he'll gonna tag it all. And so it just depends on what they do. Yeah. But, um... The, the talk has always been a separation between knowing the difference between a producer and a beat maker. Yeah. And so in your, in your eyes, 
what is the difference between a producer and a beat maker? Because you you have a lot of people that's calling themselves uh, beat makers and they're really producers, or, or vice versa. You have a lot of people calling themselves producers and they're really beat makers. Well, yeah. I feel like it's a lot more of a science when it comes to production, which is I feel like what you are. Like you go through the whole process with the artist. Yeah, um, I mean, so in my opinion, um, I feel a lot of ways about that conversation. And one, on one side of things, I don't even really think it should be a conversation. You know, I think, mm. you know, good, especially with where we're at now, of just how DIY everything is. Like, if someone's able to, like, compose something great, whether they're, like, sitting down in their bedroom and just making something and sending it to somebody thousands of miles away, mm. or if they're in the studio with, like, other musicians, like, composing something for an artist specifically if it sounds good it sounds good yeah um, mm-hmm. no I, you know i guess like actually breaking down my opinion of the distinction when i do look at the term producer i, I guess i do look at it in like the old school manner of like you know a quincy jones like really constructing something around what an artist mm-hmm. is making for a song uh versus someone who is just like just a beat maker or a composer who might just make a track sell it to an artist and then whatever happens from there happens from there mm. um you know with some people i work with some situations i guess that is what what my role is essentially like i'm just providing that backdrop for their idea mm. uh for other people you know they do have me more involved in the process of uh you know just helping hone their sound or like creating a concept for a song itself um and I like I enjoy both of those roles. You mm-hmm. know, there there is something very fun about being able to truly produce something for an artist, having that connection with them. You know, everything of that nature. But like sometimes it is just great to like look at an artist and be able to say, well, hmm, this is what I think would sound good underneath their vocals. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, just like going forward with that, like kind of I guess direct mindset. Yeah, yeah. Who gives you um, what artist in particular in particular? that you can think of, because there's probably plenty of artists, yeah. um, just three off the top of your head that I feel like give you that okay to where I feel like you can produce me in the sense of like, they allow themselves to put their pride aside and, and take your ideas yeah. in that um, sense. Uh, so I'm trying to think. And I the think, chemistry's been good to where yeah, like. Yeah. I, I, like, you know, even like recently, I just haven't been working with too many artists. Um, but definitely, I'll say uh, back in the day when I was working with uh, JK the Reaper, um, more than any other artist, like, you know, our time working together, mm. it was just like a very solid chemistry of just creating stuff. Like, you know, like he would kind of either have an idea for something or, you know, I would just send him beats mm. and have a song back within hours. Like, a nice fleshed out song but give my like feedback or whatever criticisms things of that nature yeah and you know just like go forward from there um i would say overall even just like i guess just like condensing it down from three to one like out of all of the uh just places i've had things of that nature that was like a very just solid chemistry to where there was a trust there yeah. um yeah. You know, whereas, you know, like Jamonte, he'll kind of just tell me what he exactly is looking for. And I know him well enough to be able to, like, add my own spin to things but still give him what he wants, mm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Y'all have had that chemistry for so, like, how many years has it been now, oh, the man. relationship? So I met him back in like 2013. And uh, we didn't really start. Well, we worked together very briefly then. Um, like, I did one song for him before I ended up leaving Charlotte again. Mm. But, uh yeah, we've been, like, working consistently since, like, 2018 at this point. So, mm. Yeah. Mm. That's crazy, too. Um, hold on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I feel you. It's crazy um, looking at the history that you guys have had yeah. because, like, it's you have to be under, no pun intended, I know you say you be under a rock, but you, you're not under a rock when it comes to people you love. Yeah. And so um, to see the growth of Jamonte, yeah. um, I know – for you, that's someone who's pretty much been fingerprinted throughout the whole process. Right. Um, it has to be dope to see. Man. Oh, yeah, it's it amazing. It's great. You know, like, man, yeah. yeah. Just, like, thinking for, like, the first time I met him, you know, like, to just now, just, like, how much growth. You know, both of you as a person, which is great to see on the personal side, but also, like, on the music side of things, just the things he's accomplished. It's, mm-hmm. You know, I can't really say it's crazy because it's not surprising. Mm. You know if that makes sense. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Just it was inevitable. It seems like yeah, like especially just like 
out of a lot of people I've worked with locally, you know, like based in Charlotte, whatever that nature, there are just certain things or concepts that Jamonte and I have like talked about for years to where he'll, he'll just grasp an idea that like other people will like treat as being crazy, and, but like we'll implement it in the things that we do and it like will bring success. You know, for like, I guess a good example of that, like, I've had artists tell me straight up that like me doing things outside of Charlotte just isn't really that good of a look that I should focus on my like hometown crowd, you know, just so exclusively. Whereas like he and I are like constantly traveling to other places doing shows. Yeah, like, who's who's telling you that? Uh, don't, don't, I so, mean, you don't have to put names out, but yeah. like that was a rhetorical question. No, um, I mean, who who would tell you that being an artist? Oh, like, you'd be surprised. And like, here's the thing: you would be shocked at like some of the names, like you know, locally who do truly feel that way. Mm, you know? Interesting. Um, yeah, no, nah, but yeah, it's just all like I've I've always had my own way of like representing my hometown and like mm-hmm. you know both doing things here as well as like bringing things back to here. Yeah, but, like the focus is always you know like just to be frank, like I I want to be you know great, you know I want to be remembered as one of the greats. You yeah, know? so that's going to require me doing things in other places. Yeah, it's it's inevitable. I mean, like you could you could be the. Um hometown hero still coming back to your home yeah. you know it's, it's plenty of people i mean we look at even with like and and you've done a, a, a enough foundation and groundwork to where you have that um leeway to do that yeah. it'd be different if you were somebody because i get people a lot of times to where um they'll be like where did this person come from like right, they right. they never seen him at like shows at petra's they never seen him at any community type of stuff if you're in the art scene and then the dude just pops up out of nowhere, yeah. has 100,000 followers, says he's from somewhere, um, which I still really technically don't mind if a nigga is doing that. Because yeah. if he's claiming that city, I mean, if he's putting on for niggas in the city, yeah. like, and helping people out, now it'd be different if he's, like, he's in his cocoon somewhere. Like, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But, like, nowhere near helping yeah. the art scene. I have a problem with that. But somebody like yourself, where I feel like has laid the foundation, a perfect analogy would be a Drake as well. I mean, Drake laid a foundation in Toronto. Wasn't popping yet because it was Toronto. Right. Came to America, went in the South, got signed to Young Money, did a lot of leeway in Houston, really. Yeah. And that's what really got him on to where he made that foundation for himself in Toronto to come back and then help to where, you know, he's he signed plenty of Toronto artists. And yeah. so sometimes you have to leave the city to get, A, um, missed, you know, in a sense, because, um, uh, I mean, a, a prophet doesn't get much respect in his own town. I mean, right. that's scripture. Yeah. You kind of made a, a perfect example of that when um, I was looking at your page a couple of days ago prior to this interview. And you said something. I was just, you know, just scrolling just to um, do research and stuff like that. But um, you said something that, that touched me in a sense because it was true to it to where it was when you um, you said, like, you were like, this is the first time I rapped in 10 years. Like, you end up going oh, to Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. And you were like, I would have liked to do it here in the city, but politics, dealing with the game. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. that, that kind of goes to what we're talking about to a sense. Like, it's, it had to be a reason for that. Yeah, no, um, I mean, like, um, mainly it was, like, rapping back in college. Uh, like, real, real talk, like, I had started mainly producing... Well, I started producing because I just like producing. Mm. I started rapping because back in the day, and you know, just also be on the West Side of Charlotte, whatever the case was. I didn't know anybody who wanted to like rap over my weird boom bap beats. Crazy. You know? Like during that time period, everybody was like focused on being the next Gucci, being the next Boost. Oh, I can see why you could think that. Yeah, thing. yeah. You know, like you know, like I'm, I'm, I was just you know entrenched in like Freedom Drive, you know, around like yeah. this, you know the homies and shit. So yeah, yeah you know, started rapping or whatever the case was. Had to stop because of some health issues. So. Mm. But, you know, like, for a project I put out last year, uh, Because We Must, uh, you know, did record a song for it. And, yeah, I was wanting to, like, you know, premiere that, you know, song, that, you know, whatever, here. But mm. there's just so much, like, politics, especially, like, with outside being opened again, you know. Mm. Like, just a lot of politics with, like, the venues in Charlotte, which, you know, is not new and it honestly hasn't changed. But, mm. yeah, it's crazy. Like, I was able to get, like, a show for myself booked in Brooklyn, faster than charlotte yeah you know so yeah yeah it happens and that's something that i was talking to um i had this dude a couple of weeks ago named roebuck on here oh, and, oh um, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah yeah we were talking about um 
the politics when it comes to dealing with some of these venues and him being someone that's getting into like not just managing but throwing events and promotion yeah. um, is something that he's trying to connect back with when it comes to bridging that gap between artists and these and these promoters. A perfect example would be like and 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 it still has a long way to go. I, I a perfect example to where I won't name names. Well, yeah, yeah, I will name names. I mean, shout out to Snug Harbor. They they. They look out when it comes to a lot of stuff, but then it was a scenario where um, an artist, a friend of mine, was performing recently, and they still had up uh, stuff from a previous set of somebody that wasn't even performing that night. Right. Like nobody on that bill was like using any of that equipment, and to where I felt, um, just as a venue, I feel I guess a responsibility to have the same type of respect for yep. that kind of genre as opposed to the genre that is having their equipment there. Oh, and yeah. so with that, that kind of, and I, I remember talking with uh, Hippie. Hippie was out there as well, and she was like, this is still some of the same BS that we've been dealing with when it comes to just, like, not getting the support that we really need in, in all aspects. Like, you see even still the subliminal stuff to where it's like, even though we may support you in the sense of, like, yeah, we'll let you have the night here, yeah. but we still are... You know, lack of days ago when it comes to certain things. So you still oh, yeah. see those like little subliminal shots. I still see stuff like that as like a shot. Yeah, I mean, uh, the stories I can tell. Uh, you know, honestly, like I I was throwing a, a repeating show called uh, Thuggishness. Um, threw it twice at Snug Harbor. Uh, you know, was going to throw the third one. Then the pandemic hit. Mm. Literally, like, you know, things got shut down the week of the show type you know situation. Yeah. But like the reason why I started that show... Um, you know, there's just an article. It was in one of those, like, kind of whitewashed Charlotte papers, Charlotte Magazine, one, you know, one of those ones. Um, they did an article. They interviewed some artists in Charlotte, um, as well as, like, venue owners, just to get, I guess, their takes, their quotes on, like, the hip-hop scene in Charlotte, how it affects venues. Mm -hmm. And there's just, like, a lot of just really negative things put on the hip-hop scene, you know, a lot of prejudice, yeah, you know, racist things, you know, mm -hmm. put on it. And I think, I think it was the owner of the Rabbit Hole or one of the neighborhood theaters, somebody. You know, they said something just kind of referring to hip-hop shows as being like thuggishness. You know, they don't, you know like hip-hop crowds, they always sneak in their own liquor. They're always smoking in the venue and fighting and, you know, mm. all these other things. It's just thuggishness dealing with hip-hop shows. So I unlike show. rock shows that are, like, not right, sneaking you know, in their own the cocaine and, and doing coke and in the bathroom. No mosh pits, you know, <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing, you know. So, yeah, yeah, I started the show, like, specifically called thuggishness for that very reason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like the the homies I work with that I, and I I'm around like, and even like just others, you know, like regardless of things that may or may not happen, like we're all just trying to like express ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, like them making that harder doesn't like help the things that they're talking about. You know, the yeah. the, the thuggery that they feel will happen. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I have literal stories for days about the things that I've had to go through. Like I'm literally yeah, I can only imagine. Get, like you know, I'm in the process of like. You know, surprise, surprise. Now I'm saying tomorrow, um, I, don't, I don't know when this will you know, air and everything. But, you know, Saturday. So, oh, word. Okay, perfect. Perfect promo time. <laughs> um, no, nah, so I'm throwing another beat show. Um, you know, another repainted tomorrow. It's the name of the show. And uh, bringing uh, stolen drums up from uh, Atlanta. All right. One of the most visibly recognizable producers in this country Beast. right now. Mm. Literally. And I had a struggle to do that. Really? Yeah. Dang. Oh, yeah. What venue? I mean, so it was. Uh, so what venue ended up giving you the opportunity? So the venue that ended up giving me the opportunity, like officially, is uh, Crown Station. Okay. Uh, not to put anybody on blast. There's another venue it was supposed to be at, but you know, for whatever reason, I guess they thought it was gonna be something else. Mm -hmm. And when they figured out it was gonna be a beat show, because it's supposed to be like on their outside area, mm -hmm. thought it was gonna be a beat show. They wanted to move it inside. Where they're, you know, number one, their sound system is kind of lacking, and also it's just a smaller capacity, and they wanted to charge like a ticket price that didn't make sense for it to be one of the most visible. What venue was it, man? Just I, I mean, it was Petri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew it was them yeah. too. When you said the outside, I was like, all right, it got to be, because yeah. I was like, Snug don't really do it like that. Yeah. I mean, but the, the, their stuff is dope inside and outside. They do pretty but, decent. Yeah, and like so, you know, be fair to Petri, it was like they were like at least accommodating to the event. There's other venues I reached out to that you know probably didn't just shot it down, down for you know. Yeah. But like you know, they wanted to like be like some closed off thing inside, which was supposed to be like the cool day party. Yeah. 
And, you know, they wanted to charge, like, what, what, I think, like, $7 for the tickets. Mm-hmm. You know, like, because they didn't think it would, like, have a draw or sell more. Yeah. But, again, mm-hmm. one of the most visibly recognizable producers in the country. You got me. Which, you know, I, I got a little bit of a buzz. You know, some people yeah, don't yeah. lie up. Yeah, yeah. on there. Like, you know, hella homies and, like, producers from the state of North Carolina. But because, like, hip-hop just isn't really valued in the same way as other genres... You know, it just it you know it, it just wasn't a good fit for that venue. Thankfully, you know, Crown Station was a lot more accommodating for it. Mm-hmm. You know, they've been a lot. You know, they, they've just they've been great. Honestly, I was about to say shout out to Crown Station because they really have had a changing of the guards yeah. um, since they moved yes. to that location that they've been at now. Yeah, I never really went to um, them back in the day. Just yeah, with I didn't either. I stuff. went a couple times yeah. where they had some dope. Like when I was younger, had like some good DJ set stuff going yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, like back in the day when like Dr. Was like shout out to like Dr. DJ Dr. and right. like cats like that was running shit, still running shit, but just like that was an era that you know you just had to be there. Yeah, but um. That was like the only time I would go to Crown Station Same, was yeah. like for like a DJ events like that. Since they moved to this more spacious venue, they've done a really good job of letting um, people rent out that space and, and and particularly with hip hop. Like t- shout out to Reese Raps, like who does yeah. her thing there on Thursdays and like has a a um, majority of different artists that do their thing. You know, shout out to them All not just too. for hip hop as well. Like shout out to them doing um, comedic events and like having stand up. You know, I feel like it's something that. Um, is not a dying art, but I feel like it's a underappreciated art when it comes to the Charlotte community. Like yeah. I would like to see more like people uh, venues cater to stand up. Like yeah. War- Warmack is starting to do that on Thursdays. Oh, cool. But outside from like um, Comedy Zone, yeah. and you know, um, like every now and then you may have it like at a uh, evening muse night. Like you don't really have it like that. And yeah. I feel like it's a lot of comedic. Like it's a lot of comedy here that that gets underlooked. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm glad you brought that up because it reminded me of something I was meaning to say earlier. But uh, the homie uh, DJ Ray, he used to throw, like, a stand-up event at a Tip Top Market, mm. which is the same place I did my beat show. And, you know, all love the Tip Top Market, of course. They Yeah, like, shout-out to them, man. Like, the reason why I was at Tip Top Market is because the venues didn't want to have a monthly beat show. Mm. You know? Which is, and, like, again, like, Tip Top, they're doing a monthly beat show. They're doing a monthly stand-up event. They're mm. doing these things that the actual entertainment venues in charlotte just weren't Mm. really you know looking for or like feeling would be profitable for them yeah i mean it's politics at the end of the day and then we we got to look at the people who are um not on not only owning these spots but are in charge of the booking you know like if if you know shout out to zach um and shout out shout out to all these venues man because i, I want to see the community grow as a whole yeah. and all these different things like petra you've done you've had some good wins petra um snug y'all had some dope wins let's keep winning like yeah. let's keep winning and, and broaden the horizon there's still work to do yeah. um and then but like like i was saying part of that history is the people of um politics and getting these people in here like this person is not going to outsell that event that you have with homie coming from um atlanta yeah and it's and they may have someone there on a Tuesday to dag on. They just know, yeah. and it's like they'll they'll let them have that and run that because of the politics of them knowing it. Someone, yeah. Mike, who who dag on is a, from who owns Tip Top. Mm. He's a DJ. Like he's a, he's a like he he understands that, and so it doesn't surprise me you saying like he was doing that beat stuff on on a monthly basis because he probably someone who is coming in from because he's originally from the people that own Tip Top Mike like he's originally from like Kansas City, mm-hmm. and so someone coming from the um a city coming into this city, seeing what it's lacking, having a love truly for hip hop for beat making for records, um he's done a good job to making sure that that's not a lost art and giving people. Um, ability to have their night and have a voice and so it takes that as well like um, having owners that really know the craft well exactly you know? like or like that know the craft that know the local scene and also they're just like willing to learn about you know what's going on what you know artists are you know getting booked and there's you know and it's no you know shots again shouts out to all the venues you know but like when I'm like critical or when I'm like outspoken about certain things just because like I truly love this city. It's I, coming it, from a good place. Yeah, yeah I know how yeah. great it could be. You know, there, you know, there, there just there should never be a time when like as a talent buyer, like I have to kind of like explain an act to you. you yeah, know? it's kind of you know it's your job to like look it up, see if it'll fit the venue. If if it does, go from there. You know, it's just been too many times of just like things kind of have to be explained 
because you know people aren't always of the cultures that they're booking and you know mm-hmm. aren't always as willing to learn about it as they should be yeah you know um uh, what like i do feel like there's also just like a lack of diversity with venues mm-hmm. um we don't really have mid-sized venues so there's been times in the past where like artists have reached out to me about wanting to do shows in Charlotte, wanting to like add a stop to their tour, or whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. I don't really have anywhere to book them. You know, like Snug's always been very accommodating, but they're not really big enough for certain acts, and they're you know too like just not always the right sizing. You know, mm-hmm. for certain acts with like who would be coming out. Um, like when you go to Atlanta, there's a lot of like just great selection um, as far as venues and spaces to use. I had a show there a few weeks ago at a 529. My first time being there, first time playing there. Love that space. Yeah. You know, like, I think I was also having this conversation with Jamonte as well. Um, a lot of the shards in Jar- a lot of the venues in Charlotte are great bars with, you know, like a solid venue set up there. Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of the venues in Atlanta feel like venues that just happen to have a bar. Mm. we need more venues that just kind of happen to have a bar versus like people performing in breweries and you know it, like just th- there's been like show there's been like full out concerts that have been at like clothing stores shout out to Dup and Swat yeah 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 you know they're at clothing stores because they can't get booked at venues yeah they definitely should be at the venues because those artists deserve that their fans deserve that experience yeah you know? and I think with with that you kind of um take me to my next thought when it comes to dealing with events um in situations like that we just have to i don't want to say boycott these venues but we have to give to where the people that that is allowing us to have a narrative in their space you know if everybody started like like and and then it may be a sacrifice when it comes to like the amount of people you can have in there but just imagine if like artists went on strike and started like performing at like the corner all the time or Yo, double spot so, all the time. I mean, listen, spots like that would, would drive the them crazy. You're a preacher to the choir. Like I, w- I wish there was that amount of like unity in Charlotte scene, you know. And you know, again, like when I'm outspoken about things, it's like presenting ideas or like you know presenting things as being issues so people can understand the things that we all need to be focused on. Mm. You, you can't really expect these like venues to want to change if they're you know still being supported and you know the bad habits that do affect the scene yeah you know it's 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 not about me throwing an event at x y venue it's not about the profit being made from that because that's never been like the main focus you Mm -hmm. know but like the the, i guess the thing that bothers me the reason why i talk about it so much is because there's literal like chunks of culture that could be happening in our city that aren't because of like one person not knowing who an act is or one person not wanting to give an artist a shot or thinking something's going to sell well. Mm-hmm. You know? Like that, that's literal cult. That's like, you never know somebody could be at a venue one night when a show is supposed to happen and gotten an inspiration to make something beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. It bothers I completely me that agree. Those moments don't always happen here because of like politics and just, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, I mean, if believe me, if people wanted to just only like, perform at like random spots here and there until the venues get like just gave a little bit more up man preach to the choir i mean because in actuality bro like it was a time and and you know it's definitely changed because of um shout out to zach reader because like you know he's someone that i went to high school with and got to know him more after we graduated but since he took over dealing with their bookings with Snug, I will say it's been a lot better with like events like the Player Made that that happened, and um, you know he does a good job of trying to accommodate all different genres. And dealing with that, I think that history came because it was a time beforehand. Um, a lot of these venues were missing out because I was a part of an era where I was like a um, like a house show baby. Like it was a it was an era where and and a lot of these um rock bands and stuff will remember this like and some hip hop had started going to these house shows and doing their stuff there yeah. but it was a house show wave around because I'm majority around East Side it was a house show wave on the East Side oh yeah to where talking like you had years you had mad something. like <laughs> uh, <not> to, uh, <laughs> it's a, it was a wave though man where it was mad. Dad going house shows around like Plaza, out like 
particularly like these rock shows to where like yeah. these venues, particularly like uh, the Snuzz and the Petras, would start hearing about this stuff. Having lineups just like they would have, but would out be outdoing their nights because the majority of people would be going to these house shows. Yeah. And you know what happened? Kind they start the booking crowd, those bands oh, yeah, because that, like, they were getting outplayed by house shows. Yeah, but just, like also just like the rap stuff, the rap side things, like, uh, like cops start cracking out heavy. At least like for like my time period. You talking about what house shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that played a part into it as well. But yeah. you know, I can get into a debate with that. Why them cops started crack down? I because mean, some venues started getting in you. I'm probably gonna agree. With I mean, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. ain't gonna point no finger or nothing. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, no. There's a lot of like cool DIY stuff happening back in the day. Um, you know, I wasn't as involved with the rock stuff. But I know there's definitely some like just rap shows that were having crazy numbers crazy attendance at like random spots and mm -hmm. out of nowhere you know yeah cops Ooh, were like cracking down heavily mm -hmm. you know um i was just thinking about the fact that it would be cool to start some show here in charlotte that was like from 3 a.m to 6 a.m yeah. there's nothing to do here from 3 a.m to 6 a.m yeah but it was one i mean they they had what like the one that was going on was after yeah, i know yeah. you remember that yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah yeah but that that even died down after a while sadly because yeah, yeah. like venue and you know just that was a good massive. that was a good run though that yeah. was something that was yeah. just yeah that's a great name so let's talk more um about the extended family i would say in a sense with you like the start of like um your relationship with the members of like hova's house yeah because it's like you are you know they i consider you like y'all niggas is like the avengers like <laughs> y'all all y'all all, all have y'all specialties to where it's like y'all remind me of um like and he's actually having this event coming up soon i think there's something in the water with pharrell oh, yeah. um that that moment where it's like in virginia beach you had like Timmy, you had Timmy. <laughs> I said that like I know the nigga personally. <laughs> yeah, that boy Timmy. Yeah. Timberland, you had Missy, you had like, you had Pharrell on one, and like all these guys were connected. And it was just like, I think when I think of them, of like the magic that they were making to get to the level they were, I think about y'all at Hova's house. Yeah. How it's like all of y'all have this specialty, and then y'all have these moments where y'all combine and come together, and then y'all can spread out and do your thing and like it's like a web yeah. like it's like the web of Hovis house is connected to a lot of different stuff i mean you know as far as that uh like the, the actual Hovis house project itself you know it was more just like kind of like a one-off thing uh like jamante came with, to us with the idea of us all just you know avenging together mm -hmm. and uh like make it a vital compilation of sorts um as far as you know just like relationships you know like i, I mean I, I know mariah since i was like 15 um mm, okay her like i think it, her youth pastor basically was my dj mentor so okay we would always just kind of bump into each other uh but i didn't really like i knew of autumn for a while just being in the scene um, but i didn't really get to know either of them um so it was like this one collective in charlotte uh middle ground fly high club they had like some type of um just weekend getaway type situation where like one of their members rented out their house basically to all of us or like used our house for all of us to like stay in there for the weekend mm -hmm. recording working together this was like back in 2012 oh wow yeah like i just came home from college you know didn't you know really know what was going on i've been in florida for two years like in the scene down there <clears throat> and um yeah, you know, like, you got to know Autumn and Mariah better then. Uh, from there, like, I threw a show back in 2013 called Goodstock, and uh, Jamonte just happened to, like, go to that show, and, uh, you know, like, was, like, really impressed by what was happening, so that's how he and I got tight. And, yeah, you know, most of those other relationships just kind of came from that formation, you know, mm. just knowing them. Uh, a lot of, honestly, like, a lot of my connections just kind of came from that. Um, mm. You know, Mariah and I definitely worked, uh, you know, together pretty exclusively. Like, gave her, like, her first hosting gig back in the day with the beat shows and stuff. Word, um, word. You know, just, it's always been in me, like, to push other people. You know, she expressed interest in uh, public speaking, things of that nature. I actually had a public speaking class in college for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, I just kind of gave her, like, my book, like, the textbook we have for that. Word, you know? word. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. You know, those are, like, it's just always been important to, like, push people, you mm, know? I agree. Um, and, especially uh, if you see the potential. Yeah, especially if you see the potential, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a lot of, like, the relationships I have with people just kind of come from that mindset. Or the closest I have with people come from that mindset, you know? Word. Um, yeah. 
Dope, man. That's dope. I always wondered how, I always ask when I do have, because you're the third um, person that I've had that's associated with Hovis House. Of course, I had, I've had Phil's on here, shout out to him. And I've had Autumn, so you'd be the third. Oh, you know what? I've had Cuzzo on here as well, so okay. shout out to Cuzzo. Yep. <laughs> yep. And so, um, shout out to everybody that does what they do. Um, and then, I, like I said, I like how just the energy of all of y'all together is, um, just a dope wave that I feel like the city city needs you know when it comes to um what you guys or what all you guys do separately and together when y'all do, when y'all have those moments yeah. and so it's dope hopefully I will definitely want to see more of y'all all like like yeah, yeah. Kind of like getting in that sense but I think you guys probably do do that just more like behind the scenes like when yeah, it comes to like y'all always I see y'all all ways of involved in supporting each other when it comes to events and all that so yeah. that's dope yeah. you know always always have that family to where like you can um, depend on yeah. and so that's dope that's needed especially when it comes to the industry because it's very rare to where you have um, those relationships to where they're actually truly relationships and, yeah. not, and not just like for um what can you do for me lately type of purposes yeah and know? that's something you know like like that mindset is why just with certain things you know not even gonna name drop but like you know some people i'm just not really around in our scene you know and it's that is you know like my i guess experiences with people are my experiences but like mm. if i'm like inviting you into what i do then we're family you know, mm. if, you know, like I, I, this music shit is like everything to me. Mm. So if you're like, you know, in my home working on things or it, just anything of that nature, if I'm checking in trying to see how I can make you better at what you're doing, then like we're part of the same musical family. You know, mm. so like a lot of like the I guess industry side of things, like if those things occur, I can't really have that around me, me mm. myself. So yeah, like I, I take like the relationships I have with people very seriously. Mm. You know, um, there's people I've known for years in Charlotte scene that I'll probably never work with. You know, not because they're not talented, it's not because we don't know each other, we're not it's not because we're out in the same rooms. They just they don't put that feeling into me to where it would be like a good collaboration. Mm-hmm. You know, I think like a lot of times, um people think, Oh, well you're a dope artist, you're a dope artist, we're in the same area, we have to work together. Yeah. This has mm-hmm. to happen for the city. That's not always the case. There's so many ways you can like support another artist that doesn't have to come from like just getting a beat because they're blowing up yeah or getting a verse because you know their you know name is like popping up on different blogs and stuff there's mm-hmm. so many other ways you can both support each other you know and that's something like I- i'm very big on like it's the the word that s word gets thrown out there a lot of times and it always becomes this huge debate on what is support and what isn't support how mm-hmm. support you should give a person how much support should you give a person without it being reciprocated and yeah yeah like me man if I if you're a dope person I'm gonna support you I support your podcast I'll be mm-hmm. sharing your your posts when I see them I appreciate you know like I, it's not something I think about internally. Um, when it comes to supporting other artists. So, like, the other artists that I feel like have that same mindset are people who I enjoy having around me. Yeah. You know, like, it's never, it's never been about me for things. Like, I have my own goals and, like, things I want to accomplish as a producer. Mm. When it comes to, like, anything with Charlotte, like, the goal's always been helping push the city forward so we can all succeed. Yeah, that's the mission. I'm not too concerned about myself. I'm not... I'm not concerned about Jamonte. I'm not concerned about Autumn or Hovis House. Or I don't like. I don't care. My main concern is like that kid ten years from now having like a solid foundation to make music in Charlotte with. To be able to have venues here that'll like let them perform and sort of play. You know, that's yeah. my main focus. All of our like present day things are cool. They're great. But like, if we're not creating like a future for like younger artists here in Charlotte, it, it don't mean nothing to me. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, bro, because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah. Going through those lumps and those bumps and bruises to yeah. be able to um, give that easier, I would say, um, road for the generation to come. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely times like being younger in the city, um, older artists could make life a little easier. It would have been nice, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it, like, some people take that to heart. They just get like these weird, you know, just, I don't know, just like spiteful feelings. Like, oh, nobody looked out for me. So, you know, mm. you know whatever. It's, it's me, your brother, you know. 
me, I just look at it as like, well, damn, it would have been nice if I had like somebody to like help me through this process. Yeah, so, yeah. Make sure I help right. this other person through this process. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah. That's how I am, you know. Like I could easily be that dude with it's exhausting. Like, yeah. like I, well, exhausting. I oh, you should have done this for me. You should have done that for oh. me. Like I'm, I'm telling myself that someone that I can't control should have done something for me. Yeah. And it's like I can't, I can't think that people think the way that I think. Yeah. Like if it was for me, and so like, I mean, De Niro made a good point of this when he was on here. He was like, I didn't get a lot of the help from the OGs that I feel like that I would have liked. He was like, so for me, um, you know, I didn't spoil, you know, what's what's the old saying? Like, don't cry over spilled milk. Like, he didn't cry over spilled milk about it. But what I did when I became that OG, I looked back for the younger people. And so I, I feel like that's how I am in that sense. Like, I don't cry over spilled milk. Were certain opportunities been better? Um, yeah, but then at the same time, maybe not because I may not have been prepared for that opportunity. Right, exactly. So I have no regrets for that. And 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 the stage that I'm at now, I'm all about organic connections. Yeah, and no, so same. like, I don't have any regrets about that stuff because it it put me in a position that I am now to where I'm more um, mentally strong to get through situations. Right. Yeah. And so yeah, man, for sure, I feel you 100 percent on that. Um, winding down on this episode, um, again, I, I definitely enjoyed your uh, conversation and the company. Um, what are the plans? We're pretty much this. I wouldn't consider this the second half of the year. Now we're technically in month Basically, six. Yeah. Um. How are we? How are we? How are we feeling about your plans for this second half of 2022? What are the plans? Really good. Um. You know, like coming off of having like some uh, very very meaningful shows happen these past few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you've been doing your, you've been moving and grooving heavy, bro. Like, okay. shout out to you, like, doing the shows in the A and yeah, big show in the A. You yeah. know, like, yeah, it's no, dope, bro. For I was, was actually like, thinking like, about driving down there. Oh, but I was yeah. like, I didn't have my car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just got my car out of the shop last week. I was like, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. Um, open up for Shigeto, one of, like, you know, huge and full of my music, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, just, like, kind of riding away from that. Um, like, knocking out these next few shows with Mercury. Um, mm. That's on the table for the second half of the year also again throwing uh the repainted tomorrow show july 10th at the crown station where uh, that's a huge focus also dropping a project and I have a few projects planned for this year um but dropping the first one it's going to be an ep entitled heat death uh, mm. it's all footwork stuff i've been working on the past few months um and really just push it from there uh like i said like trying to get back on the road um i wasn't really traveling at all you know, during the first part of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just try to get back out there, try to just see new places, uh, see what other cities are doing. Um, and, you know, just also just support whatever is here. Um, mm, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Dope, man. Dope stuff. Simon, man. Brother, man. I, I appreciate you. Appreciate that, you, I, you. I can I consider you a comrade now, man. We don't have that, oh, that, yeah. that talk bag on. I mean, I've, it was always good energy, even from the DMs. But, like, you know, when you had that sit down with somebody, it feels like definitely more welcoming. And yeah. so it was, a, it was a pleasure having you on here, man. If you don't mind giving people um, your socials where they can dag on, find you. Yeah. You know, I'd greatly appreciate that. Yeah. Um, for me, everything, Simon something. Uh, I spell the something S-M-T-H-N-G because I'm a millennial. Um, no vowels in it. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff, as well as Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you stream music at. You can find my work. And, yeah. Word, man. Appreciate you ha Appreciate you coming, man. I was about to say, like, you, you had me. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate you having me. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you coming on, man. This is As of Late, dude.